All right, so once you guys find your first aid bag, these are some of the items that will be in the bag. Um, there are multiples of some of these, but these are some of the key items you'll find. And we have various types of bandages, ABD pads. Uh, these are four by fours and a multi-trauma dressing. They're all essentially the same thing. They're just large bandages. Uh, you have a gauze roll, so you can use that to apply the dressings. Uh, scissors, and then you have tape. Uh, you also have a light uh, CPR mask for doing mouth to mouth, hand sanitizer, band-aids, a set of gloves, and then we have a splint, and the most important item, we have the bleeding control kit, and we'll show you guys how to use all that stuff. All right, so this is called a SAM splint. It's a malleable splint. So we'll say in this case, someone has a wrist fracture. What you want to do is unroll most of the splint. This will go in their hand, and then we'll fold this back around the elbow and then immobilizes this part. Once this is done, hopefully you have someone with you who could hold this. And you could use either tape, the roller gauze, preferably both. But for keeping it simple, we're just gonna use the tape real quick. And we're just gonna tape that on there. So you don't wanna put tape right on the wrist if that's the injured part. And you could do more as needed. Next, we're going to talk about the CPR mask. So you just open it from the top, and this is how it's going to come out. You want to make sure that you're popping it out to its full potential, and then it's going to go right on the patient's face and put the strap around it, tie it tight, and that is where you're going to put your mouth to give a breath, and you can just leave the mask on the entire time that you're giving a breath. If you're giving a breath, just try and put their, tilt their head back to ensure that most of the air goes into their lungs and continue doing this while you will wait for EMS to arrive. You're gonna find these in your kit. These are not for patients. They're not for, made for skin contact. These are gonna be used to clean up the surfaces around like tables, scissors, anything that you're gonna keep and be able to reuse. So we have various types of bandages here like we talked about before. Uh, you have a smaller one, a medium-ish one, and a larger one. Uh, so you're going to select this based on the severity of the injury. Anytime someone's bleeding, you want to pick your bandage and apply direct pressure. Uh, if the dressing soaks through, you don't want to take it off and switch it out. You want to continue to add bandages. There's a, quite a few of these in the kit, and there's multiple of these as well. Um, so you're going to hold pressure basically until EMS arrives and they can take over. You don't want to be like taking the dressing off to see if the bleeding stops. You're going to hold direct pressure until that bleeding stops or we arrive. So once you open up the bleeding control kit, this is what you're gonna have. So this just is the list of what you have. You have instructions, a survival blanket, a tourniquet with a marker, two compressed gauze, a trauma dressing, two sets of gloves, and trauma shears. So just the survival blanket, this is just to maintain heat inside. So you just unwrap it and wrap yourself inside of it. So next we're gonna talk about the tourniquet. Uh, if we're going to imagine that there's a major wound right here that once doing compressed dressing is not working and it's still bleeding, you're going to go ahead and use a tourniquet. It's Velcro, so you're just going to go ahead and take it off, make it large enough that you can slip the wound through or the limb through. Only use it on your four extremities. Wherever the wound is, you're going to want to go about two to three inches above it, but never at a joint. So I'm going to slide down a little bit and you're going to crank this and get this band as tight as possible around their arm and Velcro it. And you're gonna take this and you're gonna twist it around until you can't twist it anymore and lock it in there. Go ahead and take the rest of your Velcro and put it down. Put the time over and this is very important. This is what the Sharpie's for. You have to mark whatever time you stopped the bleeding and applied the tourniquet. All right, so here we have the compressed gauze so once you open it, it unwraps like so. And this can be bunched up and used to apply direct pressure on a wound. And then you could wrap as well. It's rolled just like the other rolled gauze that we showed you earlier. And then direct pressure can be applied. So we have here our emergency dressing. So we'll open that up. We'll have someone holding direct pressure on the wound. So there's almost looks like a gauze pad on here that needs to go over the wound, and this material is very stretchy. It's gonna help you hold pressure. So we wanna pull it as tight as possible and 
wrap them on. And then it has Velcro. So that can secure that. And again, if this isn't working, direct pressure is not working, we need to move to a tourniquet. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is the other emergency bandage. This is the one that is not included in the bag with the other bleeding control stuff in that kit. So this one has the same function as this, but it works a little differently. So I'll open it up. So this thing unrolls. And it's the same principle, but like I said, it works a little bit differently. So this almost looks like an absorbent pad. That's gonna go over the wound, just like before. It's also stretchy, so you wanna make sure we keep that nice and tight. It helps to have someone help you for sure. And then your first wrap has to go into this plastic device here. So it's real important that you have it spread out like that and capturing the whole bottom of the device, otherwise it's gonna pop back out. So what you then do, you're gonna pull it as tight as you can. You're gonna reverse the direction, pull it nice and tight. And then you're gonna go backwards. So as you go backwards, this thing is gonna increase how much pressure is being put on the wound. clamp on the sides of the bandage. So this is just a very brief synopsis of some of the equipment in your first aid kits. We recommend furthering your training. There's a lot of classes offered to members of the public that actually let you get hands on this equipment and train on it. It's also a lot of good resources on the internet and YouTube. So uh, if you have any questions, definitely seek further training or let us know.